In all cultures throughout history, food has intrigued and occupied us. But what defines a great food experience? And how can we take it even further? We aim to find out by exploring unconventional methods and innovations, as well as ancient techniques. This is Tasteology. I realized a long time ago that cooking is not a technical activity. The technique is too easy. But the big issue is art. When you want to make good food, it has to be art. And for art, I'm zero. I need to ask an artist. An artist has to make you cry from pleasure when you eat. The Caesar salad is served in many restaurants all over the world. Loved and hated, tweaked and demanded, it always comes back into style. We asked the experts from Tasteology to use their unique skills to create their own interpretation of the dish. And it seems as if a classic can be recreated into many different forms. Well, the traditional Caesar salad has anchovies, olive oil, uh, Parmesan cheese, uh, lemon, Worcestershire sauce, uh, more, more, more. Uh, but pretty much is that. So what we try to do is to bring the, the Pacific coast to this preparation. So in every way, you feel a little bit of Colombia. Get connected with the Pacific Ocean. The kind of principle that I try to go for in food is eating food that is flavorful in itself. So a chicken that tastes like chicken. When you make a salad, use ingredients that have flavor, then you don't need to do so much. So that's kind of more the model I like to make my salad on, where the, the salad, the green parts of the salad are flavorful, and the dressing, you try to pull back. Daddy, can I go wash my hands? Sure. Yeah. Usually, Caesar salad is uh, made with chicken because I don't like chicken. Oh, we want to cook a, a steak, a dry-aged steak from the Wagyu beef with uh, in the partition of Caesar salad. We grill the salad and we make a vinaigrette with cheese, with uh, capers and with olive oil. We are making now the, our interpretation of uh, a Caesar salad. We thought about how we can get the values and the textures um, with the ingredients we have from our farmers. We also want to show what you can do with old bread since um, carrot greens, because you can, uh, of course, eat them. You don't have to throw them out. Now, if you ask me about making a Caesar salad, I would, I would analyze. So this is, what does it mean? It means the salad, the chicken, probably the bread, small cubes of bread, and the dressing. The salad is very interesting uh, intellectually. And when you, you eat a, a leaf of salad, when you swallow, it turns, which means that between your teeth, you have the resistance or the softness, which means the contrast. When you cook, you should always have contrast because our brain is designed to perceive contrast. I always put sugar and salt. It's, it's a love, you know? It's a love, it's salty and sweety. When you put it into the pan, the sugar is roasting and you have this nice smell in the nose from caramel. We use the mashi or the felt salad instead of the Roman salad because uh, that's what we got from our farmer. He harvested it this morning and it also has a great taste. Now for the chicken. Okay, for the chicken, I would say that primates, animals, are prefer when it is cooked. So I would probably grill the chicken very fast, very hot, just to have the, the brown color at the outside. But the inside should be tender, so that there is a contrast. This is a, a rib eye. It's from uh, behind the neck and the strip loin in the middle. 
and it's uh, the best thing from the whole kettle. We put it in the pan, full power, for getting the, the, the roast crumble. You have the perfect crust, you see it. It's roasting perfect. In the middle it's raw. Now we have to wait. The heat has to go in the middle. Yeah. We don't know anymore that there was a time when a chicken, you could just sprinkle some salt on it and a little bit of butter and roast it in the oven. And it was amazing on its own. So it's just gonna be salt and pepper. You want a fair bit? I'm just gonna move it around because you need to get it all around. People use buttermilk now and they, they kind of make a biscuit crust. I'm not doing that. I'm just a little, a little thin film of flour. Ah, the bread is important because you have the crumb and you have the insides. And remember that the salad will be soft, so we need some contrast. Yeah, there's um, lots of old bread around and we really want to inspire also people to think about what they can do with it. Stale bread also is very good for if you want to make croutons, because it needs to have some crust and already some dryness to it. Otherwise, you have to go through the process of uh, drying it and uh, making it uh, crusty and crunchy. What we did with the croutons, we use cornbread and we slice it very tiny. Cook it with some machote oil, some cumin and some cilantro. And don't put a lot of things because you have a lot of well, flavors already on the dressing, so you don't want to put many things. And finally, the dressing. Okay, the dressing is an emulsion, it's very easy. For an emulsion, you need water, oil, and surfactant. You can make an emulsion from beef, you can make an emulsion from pork, you can make an emulsion from onion, and so on. It is a generalization of aioli. You remember aioli, garlic, and oil? <laughs> Why not? Carrot and oil, and, you, and it works. Instead of anchovies, uh, we used here tahine. It's a sesame paste. And we put some of the oven roasted beetroot and the bread. Beetroot replaces the chicken breast in a very beautiful way. This is very good. Now a little bit of the vinegar, see? for the crumble feeding the bread, alpine bread. And now, the most important thing, this is the meat. I, I love meat, I love capers, I love salad, because I don't need chicken and I don't need toast. So that's the interpretation for this crossbreed and for the, for the wagyu beef. For this salad, the stuff I put in here is really flavorful, so I don't need to do much to it. I'm just gonna put, I think, a squeeze of lemon juice, some salt, a little pepper, and some virgin oil, and it'll be good. It'll be ready to go. So you don't need like blue cheese dressing or uh, Russian dressing or something. The way it looks is important, but I try not to get hung up on presentation at home because I got a family of five. I don't have time to play. I just put it on the plate and serve it. So who wants, who wants chicken, who wants salad? Both. Both? Okay, Greta, you want some? Okay, sweetie. Here you go, a little snack. Thank you. Gerta, would you like anything? Instead of using anchovies, we're gonna use a uh, smoked tojo. It's a little shark that we use a lot in the Pacific Coast uh, cuisine. So we have one that is a little bit prepared with sofrito. So we have some herbs and spring onions and already some achate oil. I don't like Caesar salads with salmon and chicken and many, many other things. All the magic is in the dressing. We're trying to use those very indigenous uh, ingredients. So if somebody eats it, get connected with Colombia, get connected with the Pacific Ocean. The 
The big question is that we should not do what is written in books. We should decide for a goal, and when you have the goal, you decide for the way in order to reach the goal. We should never follow recipes, except from the art point of view. Even if I'm a physical chemist and studying the technique, the main idea is cooking is first love, then art, and then technique. <laughs>